First and foremost, all glory, honor, and praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh, Bahashem, Rukhakwadash. This is Prophet Yakasha from Northern King of Prophets and Brother Yaaman. Today we're going to go back over a lesson we call the origins of the Native American Indian. Now when I say Native American Indian, that includes all the Ab Aboriginal people of North America, all the Aboriginal people of Central America, and all the Aboriginal people of South America, okay? Because anytime we try to learn our history, all you can come up with is some kind of myth, or some kind of dream, or some kind of fairy tale, like Turtle Island, or the Seven Caves, where the, they say the Aztec came from. And these are all lies. Our history is recorded here in the Holy Bible, okay? Israel, 600 BC, 2,092 years before Columbus. And this man here is good Chief Joseph. This man here is Chief Joseph. In 1877, Chief Joseph, the leader of Nez Perce, Native American tribe, revealed that his, his ancient artifact, revealed his ancient artifact to General Nelson A. Miles. It was a pendant, a one inch square clay tablet with the Syrian writing, a Syrian writing, that's key. Chief Joseph said the tablet had been passed down in his family for many generations, okay? And where's Assyria? Assyria is in this area here, all right? And the Bible is a testimony to that and, and is a witness to Chief Joseph's Assyrian tablet that was passed down to him from the Assyrian captivity. A voyage by ancient Hebrews to America before the time of Christ is the foundation for an entire religion. Now, could blood evidence prove not only that they were here, but that they're the ancestors of modern-day Cherokee? Well, we can find that in 2nd Esdras, chapter 13. And verse 40. Second Esdras. Chapter 13. And verse 40. Those are the ten tribes. Which were carried away captive. Out of their own land. In the time of Hosea the king. Whom Salamanezer. The king of Assyria. Led away captive. And that's his Assyrian tablet. It was passed down from the Assyrian captivity, all right? The time of King Hosea the king, who Solomonezer, 
the king of Assyria led away captive. And he carried them over the waters, and so came they into another land. But they took counsel, they took this counsel among themselves, that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt, that they might there keep their statutes which they never kept in their own land. And they entered into the Euphra Euphrates by the narrow passage of the river. For the Most High then shoot signs for them and held still the flood till they were passed over. For through that country there was a great way to go, namely a year and a half. Now that's key, remember that, a year and a half. And the same region is called Arsarith. All right, so it took them a year and a half to come from Assyria and sail all the way across the Atlantic to the bottom of what is now called South America. But in the Bible, in the time of uh, uh, Estra, it was called Arsarith. Lehi's alleged route would have taken him from Oman through the Indian and Pacific Oceans to the Central American coast. Even using ocean currents, the drifters suggest it would have taken 580 days. That's more than a year and a half. Now, if you search the Jewish Encyclopedia, Arsarith, you will find which is called America now. Okay? In Mesoamerica, in Israel, Jerusalem will soon be taken over by the Babylonians and the Temple of Solomon destroyed. Ancient Hebrews are fleeing, but where to? So we have to be able to back up that scripture. We have to have a, a, um, a precept that backs that up and a witness to that scripture there. And we have one. You can find that in 1 Kings chapter 10, verse 22. The book of 1 Kings chapter 10 and verse 22. For the king had at sea a navy of Tharshish with the navy of Hiram. So the king had a navy, okay? Once in three years came the navy of Tharshish bringing gold and silver, ivory and apes and peacocks. Gold and silver, all right? And once every three years, all right? So what did it say in Second Estras? It took a year and a half to float to the bottom of Arsarith. So naturally, when they float back, they sail back, it would take a year and a half to bring back all the resources of the gold and silver. The Roman ships that the Hebrews would have used had they made such a voyage would be solid built round formed hulls heavily framed that is thick ribbed carrying a square sail with a high elevated bow and stern capable of carrying all sorts of cargo and people. Right? A year and a half plus a year and a half that is three years. Read that again. Verse 22. For the king had at sea a navy of Tharshish with the navy of Haram. Once in three years came the navy of Tharshish, bringing gold and silver, ivory and apes and peacocks. So every three years, they would get a, another shipload of gold and silver from the bottom of Arsarith. All right? So that is the witness of Second Estrus chapter 13, starting at verse 40. All right, what we got next? Genesis. Now we're going to go into Issachar, how the so-called Mexican got his name. Issachar is our name. All right. How did we get that name? How did the Most High name us Issachar? We're not Mexicans. We're not Chicanos. We're not Native American Indians. All right. These are all bywords like Beaner like immigrant, like migrant caravan. These are all what the white man has, the so-called white man, uh, who is the devil in the Bible, known as Esau, 
These are the, what he calls us. But what did the Most High Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai name us? Let's get that. The book of Genesis chapter 30 and verse 14. And Reuben went in the days of wheat harvest and found mandrakes in the field and brought them unto his mother Leah. Then Rachel said unto Leah, Give me, I pray thee, of thy son's mandrakes. And she said unto her, Is it a small matter that thou hast taken my husband? And wouldst thou take away my son's mandrakes also? And Rachel said, Therefore he shall lie with thee tonight for, for thy son's mandrakes. And Jacob came out of the field in the evening, and Leah went out to meet him, and said, Thou must come in unto me. For surely I have hired thee with that with my son's mandrakes. And he lay with her that night. And God and God hearkened unto Leah, and, con and she conceived, and bare Jacob the fifth son. And Leah and Leah said, God God hath given me my hire, because I have given my maiden to my husband. And she called his name Issachar. So Leah had um Rachel had um had some mandrakes but Jacob used to like Leah had some mandrakes right but Jacob he loved Rachel more and was always laying with her every night but Rachel didn't have any children at that point so she told Leah let me have your mandrakes Mandrakes was a root in the ancient times that would promote fertility. So she wanted that root that promoted fertility because she wanted to bear uh, Jacob some children. So she traded Jacob for the night to Leah. And read 18 again. Verse, verse 18. And Leah said, God, God has given me my hire. My hire. Because I have given my maiden unto my husband. And she called his name Issachar. So Issachar means man for hire. Alright. Let's get this picture right here. Who are the hardest working people here in the Americas? Who are the uh, uh, hardest working uh, um, construction workers? Maids. Hotel and motel room cleaners. Uh, uh, nannies. Uh, field workers, farm workers, Issachar, our name means man for hire, and that is a characteristic of the so-called Mexican-American, that we are hard workers, and the scripture also backs that up. The book of Genesis, chapter 49, and verse 14, Issachar is a strong ass, a strong ass, couching down between two burdens, two burdens. Right here, Issachar, an ass is a donkey, a burro, all right? And these are two heavy burdens. Burros are known for their strength. Donkeys are known for their strength and to be able to carry heavy loads. And on each side, we have two burdens, all right? One burden over here and one burden over here, all right? Read it. And he saw that rest was good, and the land that it was pleasant, and bowed his shoulder to bear, and became a servant unto tribute. So he saw that rest was good. And during um, our work day, at the hottest point of the sun, which is around 12 to 1 o'clock, we would take what was called a siesta. From We wouldn't have to work in that the, the hottest point of the sun, the hottest time of the day. So that's what it means when it says we we saw that rest was good because we would take a siesta, we would take a break during that time. All right, read 15 again. Verse 15, and he saw that rest was good and the land that it was pleasant and bowed his shoulder to bear and became a servant unto tribute. And a servant unto tribute, all right. This is another uh, way to say slave, okay? And a servant unto tribute. You can see the servants that we became servants unto tribute because we work for nearly nothing. We work hard all day for nearly nothing. 
the, 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 the migrant workers starting in 1930 with uh, Cesar Chavez and his family would work for pennies all day long. Would sleep in shacks, mud shacks, all right? And it was really hard. And that's what it means when it says we will become a servant unto tribute. Because even unto this very day, we are servants unto tribute in the agricultural, um, the agricultural, agricultural world on all the farmlands. Right? All right. Let's get um, First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32. The book of First Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32. And of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do, the heads of them were two hundred, and their brethren brethren were at their commandment. And the children of Issachar, which were men that understood the times. And right here, this is a timepiece. This is a calendar, which is known as the Aztec calendar, or the Mayan calendar. Very intricate, precise pieces of time, system of timekeeping. So precise, we were able to predict the phases of the moon 5,000 years in advance. And this, the Mayan calendar, also prophesied of the beginning of the end of Esau, the so-called white man, which started in 2012. That's when his population began to take a dive. All right. From there, let's get Jeremiah 3 and 18. Jeremiah 3 and 18. Jeremiah 3 and 18. The book of Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 18. In those days, the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel. So the house of Judah is the southern kingdom. The house of Judah is the son of the kingdom. The, Amer the, the American blacks are so-called Negroes. Benjamin, West Indian blacks, Levi, the Haitians. That's the house of Judah. The house of Israel is the no northern kingdom, okay? House of Judah is southern kingdom. House of Israel is northern kingdom, who consists of Ephraim, the Puerto Ricans, Manasseh, the Cubans, Simeon, the Dominicans, Zebulon, Guatemala to Panama, the Mayans. Gad, hold that up for me. Gad is the Native American Indians. Reuben, the Seminole Indians. Asher, Colombia to Uruguay, the Incans. Issachar, the Mexicans, are the Aztecs. Naftali, from Argentina to Chile. All right, and that's the Northern Kingdom, and that's the House of Israel. Right. Read that again. Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 18. In those days the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel. So we coming together now. All right. The so-called uh, 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 Negroes or blacks here in America and the so-called uh, Chicanos or Native American Indian or his so-called Hispanics. We coming together now. All right. We join in forces now because the Most High has put the Spirit upon us to 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 start fishing and start hunting. All right, read it. And they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I have given for an for an inheritance unto your fathers. So he's given back our land, our inheritance, the land that the so-called the, the squatter so-called white man, the, the, the colonist, the, the uh, colonialist, the imperialist, the, the, the homicidal maniac, the genocidal maniac, the so-called white man, the so-called Caucasian from the Caucasus Mountains had stole from us our inheritance. But the Most High has given it back to us now. 
because we're coming back to the law, statutes, and commandments. And we, we start to obey his laws again. And he's giving back our spirit of kings again. All right. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 15 and verse 7. And I will fan them with a fan in the gates of the land. I will bereave them of children. I will destroy my people since they return, since they return not from their ways. And this is happening right now, right at this very moment. Right at this very minute. This verse right here is happening right now. Read it again. And I will fan them with a fan in the gates of the land. I will fan them with the fan. In the ancient times, they would they would beat uh, uh, the grain and the wheat on the, a threshing floor. Okay? And the chaff would be beaten off of the grain. And they would get a fan and blow away the chaff because the chaff was lighter. So it would separate. The, the wheat from the grain, all right? The wheat from the chaff, all right? Because it was lighter and they would use a fan to separate grain and chaff. And the fan was used to separate. Read it again. And I will fan them with a fan in the gates of the land. The gate of the land is the border. I will, I will bereave them of children. The, the ICE and the Homeland Security is taking the children of the migrant caravan. I will destroy my people since they return not from their ways. They're being destroyed because they're still worshiping the Virgin Mary and the Santos, St. Jude, so-called St. Jude, so-called St. Christopher, so-called St. Peter, or whatever they worship. They're worshiping these heathen gods, so the Most High is destroying us still, all right? So it's important that we come back to the law, statutes, and commandments of God, because this one right here, this one's happening right now as we speak. All right, what we got next? The book of Jeremiah, chapter 16 and verse 15. But the, but the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all the lands whither he had driven them. And I will bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers. So from the land where he had all driven us, he will bring us again to the land that he gave us to our fathers as an inheritance. Right. What do we got next? The book of Lamentations, chapter 4 and verse 18. They hunt our steps, that we cannot go in our streets. These streets, they, the, the so-called white man had brainwashed people into uh, uh, making everyone think that we're some kind of, um, uh, some kind of savage that had no no knowledge of nothing. These streets were already here, all right? We had highways and trails and paths. This infrastructure was already here. The white man just came in and moved them and said he built everything. We had buildings, we had structures. The white man just came in and, and, and built something on top of them to make them, to make everyone think that he's the one that built it. Read it again. Verse 18, they hunt our steps that we cannot go in our streets. These are our streets, okay? Our end is near, our days are fulfilled, for our end is come. Our, our persecutors are swifter than the eagles swifter of- Swifter than the eagle, read it again. Our persecutors are swifter than the eagles of the heaven. They pursued us upon the mountains. They laid wait for us in the wilderness. They wait. They laid wait for us in the wilderness. And this is all these militia groups that are going to the border, laying wait for um, migrant care, uh, migrant people in the migrant caravan to cross over. There's people. There's serial killers going out there just to kill people, just to shoot people with the night vision scopes and everything. They see a, a, a woman and child trying to cross the the, the desert, and they just they just blast them, man. Because that's that's what Esau does. He's he's a killer. He's a natural born killer, man. He's a serial killer. He's a serial genocide genocidal maniac. All right. What do we got next? The book of Hosea, chapter seven, and verse eight. Ephraim, he hath he hath mixed himself among the people, 
Ephraim is a cake not turned. Okay, this is why um, a cake not turned is the lighter side of the cake, right? Ephraim. Ephraim is the head tribe of the northern kingdom. So whatever pertains to Ephraim pertains to all of us in the northern kingdom. All right. And the, uh, uh, so -called, uh, most so-called Chicanos are most so-called Native American Indians. And most so-called um, Mexicanos are not dark as Negros are. All right. Because Ephraim have mixed himself among the people. The Assyrians have the same skin tone as us. The Assyrians are the modern day uh, Iraqis, all right? Modern day Iraq, those people in that area, they look just like us because we were mixed. They raped our women and mixed themselves among us um, during the time of the Assyrian captivity in um, 780 BCE, all right? So that's why we are cake not turned. That's our, that pertains to our skin complexion. All right, what we got next? The book of Psalms, chapter 83 and verse 3. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. So we are the hidden ones, all right? We're so hidden that when uh, a so-called Hispanic child is born, the, the state marks them as being a white person, all right? Because they don't want us to... Um, think that we are a people, okay? That we are a group of people, right? And this is how they um, do their numbers of population. They're including Hispanic people when they're counting the population of the Caucasian, the white America, all right? Psalms 83 and 3. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They've taken crafty counsel. So the French, the Spaniards, the uh, the English, the Portuguese, um, the Germans even, all of, of the Europeans came over here and start dividing up what belonged to us, what they stole from us. It was loot, man. They looted us and they divided up the land, they divided up the resources, and they take the crafty counsel against us. And then they hit our identity, man. Because once we realize what our identity is and who we really are, according to who the Most High says we are, then we're going to regain our power, man. Once we come back to the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah. And that's the white man's worst fear. All right. What we got next? The book of Genesis, chapter 30 and verse 10. Now we're going to go into Gad, all right? And Zilpha. Le Leah's maid bare Jacob a son, and Leah said, A troop cometh, and she called his name Gad. So a troop cometh, that's how the Gadites, the Most High named Gad, all right? Because it was a prophecy of him being taken over by uh, the Calvary, the American Calvary, which was um, the, uh, uh, the American military, the government's military. They were called the Calvary. They were troops. All right, next. The book of Genesis, chapter 49 and verse 19. Gad, a troop shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at the last. Gad, a troop shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at the last. All right. So it's important that we share this information. All right. If you know this information and you know a Gadite, you need to bring it out to him and help him come out of his folly, all right? Because we're waiting for Gad to wake up, man. We're waiting for them to get strength and, and, and shake off this uh, uh, this soft Christian spirit of always, you know, crying and, and, and uh, with the, the, the music and the, the, the piano and during their preaching, you know what I mean? The whole soft spirit, man, you need to shake that off and, and uh, do check your balls and see if they're still there. Stand up, man, and speak with boldness and confidence. All right, let's go. The book of Genesis, chapter 48 and verse 5. And now thy two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, 
which were born unto thee in the land of Egypt, before I came unto thee into Egypt, are mine. And as Reuben and Simeon, they shall be mine. So this is the adoption. Read that again. Verse 5. And now thy two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh. Ephraim and Manasseh, the two head tribes of the northern kingdom, who are the Hispanic uh, Native Americans, all right? Which were born unto thee in the land of Egypt, before I came unto thee into Egypt, are mine. As Reuben and Simeon, they shall be mine. So this is the Most High adopting the Hispanics and Native American Indians, all right? What, what, what was that? Genesis, the book of Genesis chapter 48 and 5. So that is the adoption for the Northern Kingdom, all right? So don't let none of these black-only Israelites uh, come to you and say that, you know, we're not Israel, man. Because the Most High, He adopted us back in. You know what I'm saying? All right, next. The book of... The book of Numbers, chapter 15 and verse 38. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid, and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. So this is, you know, Gadites are known for wearing fringe. All right. And this is what fringe is. And this has been a tradition from the beginning. All right. Let's get what's next. The book of Numbers, chapter 24. And verse 15. And verse 5. How goodly are thy tents, O Jacob, and thy tabernacles, O Israel. This goes into Gad's, Gad's teepees. It says that, read it again. The Most High, he liked it, our teepees. How, godly, how goodly are thy tents, O Jacob, and thy tabernacles, O Israel. How goodly are your teepees. All right, what's next? The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and 12. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse 12. Thou shalt make thee fringes upon the four quarters of thy vesture, wherewith thou coverest thyself. All right, and that's God again. He you know, everybody knows Gad and Rocket fringes. All right. Uh, Deuteronomy 33 and 20. Mm -hmm. the, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 33 and verse 20. And of Gad, he said, Blessed be he that enlargeth Gad. He dwelleth as a lion and teareth the arm with the, with the crown of the head. So Gad teareth the arm. He used his arm to tear the crown of the head. That's what we call scalping. All right, next. Is that a seven and eight? Hosea 7 and 8. Hosea chapter 7, verse 8. The book of Hosea chapter 7 and verse 8. Ephraim, he hath mixed himself among the people. Ephraim is a cake not turned. There we go again. This is why Native American Indians used to be dark as Negroes. They're not Negroes, though, all right? We're not Negroes. There's a lot of uh, 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 black uh, aboriginals uh, doctrine coming out that uh, all Native Americans were Negroes. We're not. We were dark as Negroes. But we're not anymore because we had been mixed with the, the heathen. 
all right? The heathen had raped our women, and we mixed with them, okay? That's why we are cake not turn, okay? What's next? The book of Lamentations, chapter 5, and verse 1. Remember, O Lord, what has come upon us. Consider and behold our reproach. Our inheritance is turned to strangers, our houses to aliens. We are orphans and fatherless. Our mothers are as widows. We have drunken our water for money. Our wood is sold unto us. Our necks are under persecution. We labor and have no rest. Now that's self-explanatory. Let's break it down though. Read, a, um, read it again. Verse 1. Remember, O Lord, what has come upon us. Reconsider consider, and behold our reproach. Our inheritance is turned to strangers. Our inheritance. This land is our inheritance. And it was turned over to strangers because we quit following the law, statutes, and commandments of God and went worshiping uh, nature. We went worshiping the trees, the lakes, the wind, the, the fire, the sky, the ground. We worship everything except for the one who created it. All right? And that's a, a descension. That's descending. That's degenerating into a heathen state. All right? And this is because we've been cut off for so long, all right? Our people been over here for around 3,000 years, or over 3,000 years now, okay? Cut off for our, from our homeland, okay? We, our houses to aliens. Our houses to aliens. We had buildings. We had structures, okay? They just moved in, all right? Just like um, I, I watched a movie with my, my kids last night. It's called Home. Where the aliens they just moved in on them and they relocated all the all the people uh they relocated them to another whole different island or something and the aliens just moved into their houses used their streets used their cars used their, all their things and stole all their resources that's just what happened to us read we are orphans and fatherless and the the um in the hispanic community or chicano community uh the children that are orphans is among the highest here in America, man. Our, right? our mothers, statistically, our mothers are as widows because uh, the man will have a child. Our mothers are as widows because the man will have a child and just leave them to fend for themselves. Leave the woman and leave the child to fend for themselves, statistically. We have drunken our water for money. Our wood is sold unto us. They're selling our own resources to us, man. We can't even go fish in this lake without having to pay Esau uh, for a fishing license. All right? All right, what else we got? The book of Psalms, chapter 83 and verse 3. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people, and consulted against thy hidden ones. What's next? Isaiah 29 and 10. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 29 and 10. The book of, of Isaiah chapter 29 and verse 10. For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep, and hath closed your eyes, the prophets and your rulers, the seers hath he covered. If you see um, any of uh, the videos when I go uh, uh, street, pre street teaching the do camp, you can see the spirit of slumber on my people, man. And we're getting ready to go out again and start, um, you know, street teaching with them, man. And you'll be able to see the spirit of slumber on my people. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, and verse, and verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled in fire in mine anger, which shall burn forever. So, and thou even thyself shall be discontinued from thy heritage. Our inheritance was cut off from us, man. 
an inheritance goes down the line. You hand it to your children, then they hand it to their, their son, then he hands it to his son, all the way down the line to your great, 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 great grandsons. You know, there's enough gold that the, 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 the uh, Spanish has stole from us to uh, make all our families rich, man. 500 tons, 500,000 tons of gold? We will all be rich with that. That's our inheritance they stole from us. You could send your kids to Harvard or Yale with that uh, inheritance if we still had it. If you understand what that means, that's 500,000 tons of gold they stole from us and 1 million tons of silver. And that's just what they stole from South America, man. All right, let's go. The book of Matthew, chapter 21 and verse 43. Therefore, I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the, the fruits thereof. Bringing forth the fruits thereof. So the kingdom of heaven was taken from us. And then Esau came in and he made cars with our resources. He made uh, skyscrapers with our resources. He uh, started while, uh, mining uh, the oil our drilling for oil, he took our oil, our gold, our silver, all of our, our vegetation, he took the great, the best lands for farming, all right? These are all things that the Lord gave us as an inheritance, man. Right? So if you want it back, you gotta come back to the law, statutes, and commandments of God and be obedient to your creator. Be obedient to our Father and he will give it back to us. Read. What's next? It says Romans 9, but where do I go? Oh, all of it. Oh, okay. The book of Romans, chap chapter 9 and verse 1. I say the truth in Christ. I lie not, my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost, that I, ha that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. So you should see the condition of your people, man. And you should have a great heaviness and a sorrow in your heart. This is what Paul's talking about. This is why I'm out here, okay? Read. For I could wish that myself were accursed, accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kin my kinsmen, according to the flesh. According to the flesh, all right? Who are Israelites. Who are Israelites. To whom pertaineth the, the adoption. To whom pertaineth the adoption. In the same way that uh, the Most High adopted Manessa and Ephraim back in, we being adopted back in as the, the, the branches that were broken off once. We being grafted back in, all right? That ought to feel pretty good, all right? But then let's stop right there. We adopted back in as long as you come back to the law, statutes, commandments of the Most High God. Let me get Romans 9 again and we'll end it with the adoption. All right. Let me read it. Yeah, go ahead. The book of Romans, chapter 9 and verse 1. I say the truth in Christ. I lie not, my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites, Israelites. To whom pertaineth the adoption. To whom to pertaineth the adoption. And the and the glory and the covenant and the and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. These are all the things that belong to us, the Native American Indians, the Native American Indians of the North America, South America, and Central America. And take notes on this. Uh, chop it up, redo it, put a video out about it, you know what I'm saying? We have to get this information out to our people so we can get our inheritance back. All right, and with that, brothers, I say Shalom. Thought of early Hebrews coming to the New World has been a topic of a great deal of discussion going all the way back to the 19th century. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is based in part on the Book of Mormon, which tells how a prophet named Lehi and his sons built a boat and sailed it to America around 600 BC. 
Artistic renderings often depicted as a type of ark with sails. But there was another type of ship Israelites were using at that time.